Oh 
Lord, we thank you. We worship your name. Thank you because the weight of your glory is already released. The weight of your glory is already in us by Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come to your people and bring counsel and wisdom for our day and time. Lord, we pray that you will grace this moment as we release your counsel, your wisdom to your people at this time, that indeed an impartation will go forth by power, by your spirit, to lift the hearts and the lives of your people, even in the season that we are in. We bless you and we honor you, for it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. And everybody said. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. God bless you so much. We want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the prophetic conference. My name is Pastor Harry Muni from Living Wells Church in Kikuyu. And I'm so delighted, so, so delighted that the Lord can give us an opportunity to bring to us a word in season for such a time as this so that your life will find bearing, your life will find direction, and you will come to an expected end. Amen. Just to begin to lay a foundation for us, and begin before I just welcome the minister of the word this wonderful evening. Hosea chapter number 12, verse 13, the Bible says, By a prophet... The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he was preserved. You know, several months ago, even as we've been going through this COVID-19 season, the Lord began to lay on my heart concerning the state of his people. And even when I was listening and looking at us, the local church, Living Wells, right here, I was beginning to be burdened and to be able to ask myself, how can, I, how can I reach out to each and every one of us? And the Lord directed me to this portion of scripture, reminding me that there was a time in history when his people were also incarcerated. They were captive in Egypt. And he sent a man by the name of Moses. The Bible tells us through this portion of scripture and others that actually Moses was the prophetic agency that the Lord used to bring Israel, his people, out of Egypt. And not only to bring them out of Egypt, but to preserve them in the wilderness and to finally bring them into their promised land, into the place that he had already promised them. You know, when we look at the Old Testament, we know there are many prophetic agents. There are many prophets that we find in Scripture. And we see the Lord particularly using the prophets and the prophetic grace to release deliverance to God's people. And in this season that we are in, that we are slowly stepping out of, we need to understand that the prophetic grace is relevant for our day and time. And the Lord is echoing the same words to us. That by a prophet, the Lord will bring us out of every situation, including COVID-19. And whatever it may have brought with it. And by a prophet, he will also preserve us. I need to let us know, brothers and sisters, that in the Old Testament, they used to have prophets. Men and women who are singly anointed by the Lord. After the cross, it is the desire of the Lord that each one of us is able to operate by the same grace. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, the Lord released four, five graces. Among them was the prophetic grace through which he uses 
to activate, to inform, and to let us know that it is the desire of the Lord not just to have one prophetic agency in our midst, but it is his desire that we as his people are activated as a prophetic company. That you and I can come to a place where we can be able to hear the voice of the Lord. That the voice of the Lord can adjust our lives. The voice of the Lord can impact our lives. You know, in Numbers chapter number 11, verse number 28 and 29, we find a proclamation by Moses himself. He says, Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. As Moses was voicing those words, I believe he was voicing them, voicing and echoing the desire of the Lord for his people. That the Lord desires that each one of us can carry this grace that we are calling the prophetic grace. I know some of us may have come across this grace. You may have come across certain people who carry this grace. And maybe you may have been disillusioned because of what you found, because of what you experienced with them. I do believe within these four days that we are coming to you this way, the Lord will begin to minister to each and every one of us and begin to release a grace and to let us know that actually this prophetic grace is in us. It is his desire that each one of us can prophesy. That is what Paul says when he was writing to the Corinthians. He says that you may all prophesy one by one. These four days are going to be a time of impartation, a time of teaching, and a time of preaching. The word to release these principles to us, to let us know our place, our position, to let us know what we need to do in order to flow in this prophetic grace by which the Lord wants to deliver us out of every, every situation and also to preserve us in our current situation that we may live lives that are restful. We may live lives that we know will come to our destiny. Yes, COVID-19 is here and there may be other situations that are ahead of us, but the Lord is building his church to the point where the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So I trust that you can be able to find time these four days, today, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday indeed during our Sunday service, we will also be bringing the same grace to us. And we trust that it will be a time where you receive a strong impartation, and indeed your heart and spirit will be lifted. The Lord is sending to us his choice servants, and also who have been friends of this ministry for a long, long time. Yes, every time they step into our soils, the Lord releases a word out of their hearts and spirits to minister to us. And I know this will not only be another time, but there will be a shift as well as we hear from the Lord through them. Pastor James Mbogwa and his wife, Dr. Luce, who are longtime friends of this ministry and of my family in person, senior ministers of Fountain Gate Church, carry an apostolic and a prophetic word for our day and season. They are elders in the body of Christ and particularly in our nation, and many of us may have been impacted by them. And so it is really, really an honor and a privilege for us to have them during these four wonderful days that I know the Lord will use them to release a word to his people for us here in Living Wells and even to those of you that will join us as we go along. Amen and amen. It is my joy now to take this time to welcome uh, my very good friend, Pastor James, to come and begin to share with us these wonderful principles concerning the prophetic. Amen. Welcome, Pastor James. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Harry, and I want to begin by greeting you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning into this great conference. I'm so honored and so delighted uh, to have received the invitation by these, my good friends, 
Pastor Zahari and Grace Munyi, ministering right here in Living Wells Church, Kikuyu. I don't take it for granted. I am grateful to God for the opportunity to bring the word of the Lord. Congratulations for the new look of your sanctuary. I, I really like it. This is the kind of a place the preacher wants to stay on and on and on and preaching. And I bless God. I, I bring you greetings from my wife who could not be with us uh, tonight, but we hope she can join us tomorrow. But definitely before the conference is over, uh, she will have uh, joined us in one or two of the sessions. I'm so excited about uh, prophetic ministry, which is the focus, is up to the theme of this conference. This is a prophetic conference, and we bless God for uh, his grace that is going to attend uh, to us as we serve in this great, great conference. Well, let's begin by praying. Heavenly Father, I thank you this wonderful evening that you have given us to recline at the table of the Lord and break bread and we do so in the hope that just like the night that Jesus broke bread, their eyes were opened. Even so, our eyes will be opened, especially, Lord, as you release among us the grace, the prophetic grace, the ministry of the prophetic grace that will impact our lives and change our lives and our churches uh, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen. 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 Now, prophetic conference. Of prophetic conference. Let's begin by uh, doing a, what I would call a very broad landscaping, painting with a very broad brush on the prophetic. I'll do that tonight and perhaps in sessions that are coming, I'll, I'll expound more and more and more uh, of what this uh, grace is all about. And like Pastor Harry has done so very well tonight, making reference to Numbers chapter 11 and verse 16 where the Lord said to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting that they may stand there with you. Then I'll come down and talk with you there. I'll take off the spirit that is upon you and will put the same spirit upon them. And I shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Then you shall... Say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat, for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you. Because you have despised the Lord who is among you, and I have wept before him, saying, Why did we ever come up out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people have, whom I have are 600,000 men on foot, yet you have said, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough for them? And the Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's arm been shortened. Now you shall see what, whether I say whether what I say will happen to you or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tabernacle. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the seventy elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. But two men had remained in the camp. The name of one was Elder, the name of the other Medad, and the Spirit rested upon them. Now they were among those listed, but who had not come out to the tabernacle, yet they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Elder and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses returned to the camp, he and the elders of Israel. Oh, that all the Lord's people that all the members of the body of Christ, that every believer 
would be a prophet or would be prophetic. Now, the prophetic ministry is not just for a few people. It's a grace that builds the entire of the body of Christ. The prophetic is not for a few people. All that all the Lord's people, not just the pastors, all the apostles, all the teachers, all the evangelists, all the prophets, not just those alone, but the mind of God is that all his people would become prophets or become prophetic. And so as we do this uh, conference beginning here tonight, we have a fivefold objective. Number one, to create a clear understanding and appreciation of the prophetic ministry within the body of Christ. And secondly, we intend to show you the importance of this ministry, the prophetic ministry, for church growth and for the stability of nations and everything else that concerns us. Thirdly, we hope to bring or release a prophetic impartation. Number four, we intend to activate the listeners, you that is here with us tonight and all others that will watch throughout all the four sessions. We intend to activate the listener to operate more effectively in the prophetic ministry. And finally, we hope to raise a prophetic company that will bring ministry to the Church of Christ in Kenya and even to the nation of Kenya. Now, back to Numbers chapter 11. Did you see that the 70 men that were appointed by Moses had to be presented in the tabernacle? The 70 elders had to be presented in the tabernacle, a type and a picture of the church. In other words, then, the prophetic activation takes place within the structure of the body of Christ. The prophetic is an integral part of the tabernacle. It's an integral part of the church. It's an integral part of the body of Christ that is, of course, represented, as we do know, by the tabernacle that God asked Moses to build. And the purpose for the building of the temple was so that God would meet with his people. The tabernacle was the place of meeting. So the tabernacle does not only represent the church, but the tabernacle also represents our fellowship or communion or meeting with God. Now look at this. Our ability to commune with God and connect with him and relate with him is related or connected to the prophetic dimension. It is not possible for the church, for a family, for a believer, for a ministry, for a nation to relate with God properly to relate with God accurately without this prophetic dimension. And yet, and yet, the prophetic was not released upon uh, the, the 70 elders other than God sharing of the same spirit that was upon Moses and putting the same spirit upon the 70 elders. What does that mean to us? The function of the prophetic within the body of Christ will require the equipping, the impartation, and the activation by the fivefold ministers. So it's not just enough for us to have prophets in the fivefold ministry, but those prophets in the fivefold ministry must now begin to activate the prophetic within the body. It was not enough to have one prophet by the name Moses. Alone, he would not handle the need of the hour and the need of ministry. The people are already complaining. The people are already unhappy. The people are already murmuring against God. Simply because the need and the burden was much more than Moses could handle alone. The ministry, the prophetic dimension that must begin to be released within the body of Christ will require that it's not just the fivefold ministers only that are flowing in this grace, the prophetic grace, but that the body of Christ will begin to be activated in the same grace. Can I hear an amen? And yet that could not happen. That could not happen until the spirit that was upon Moses came upon the 70. And that tells you and I that the prophetic is a the spiritual dimension of ministry. The prophetic is a highly spiritual dimension of ministry. And it was not until the spirit that was upon Moses, the prophet, came upon the 70, the elders, that the 70 were able to begin to prophesy because prophecy or the ministry of, of a prophet or the office of a prophet, it is a highly spiritual ministry. Not just spiritual as in any spirit. It's a highly Holy Spirit-led and Holy Spirit-governed and Holy Spirit-orchestrated. It's a highly Holy Spirit-managed kind of a ministry. 
And so as we talk about, therefore, the prophetic ministry, we are therefore being invited one more time to begin to study the Holy Spirit, who is the most prophetic one among us. He is the carrier of the grace. He is the carrier of the office of a prophet. And now that he holds this in trust on behalf of the church, it's time for us now to begin to arise and come into this dimension of the Spirit. As I was preparing for this session, the first session, which is a general one, I could not but take note of a few things in the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 18 we read that for through him, referring to Christ, we have both access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers, having had access through him, Christ, to the Father by the Spirit. Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. I like the mention of Spirit, the repeated mention of Spirit, because like I mentioned earlier on, the ministry of the New Testament church is a ministry of the Spirit. And the prophetic ministry we are talking about over here is ministry that is coming out of the Spirit. As He, the Holy Spirit, gives us access to the Father who gives all gifts and all ministries and all graces, including this one that we are sharing about over here, the prophetic. Please take note of what the Bible says in, in verse 20. It says that when the Spirit gives us access to the gifts that the Father gives, which includes the prophetic gift, then we are built and we become part of the building, we become part of the temple, the holy temple of God, that is built upon a foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. What does that mean? It means that the prophetic ministry is basic, is so important, it is foundational. We cannot do much, we cannot go far without the ministry of prophets because apostles and prophets are foundational ministries, they are foundational giftings and working together, the apostles and prophets that bring to us apostolic grace and prophetic grace that bring an apostolic starting and a prophetic starting, working together, they lay the foundation which of course we do know is Christ himself. So this ministry is so key. The prophetic ministry is so key because a, def a deficiency of the prophetic grace in a family, in an individual, in a church, in a nation ends up being a deficiency of foundation. And, and you know what? We can only build as much as the foundation we have laid in place can support. The foundation determines the height and the size of whatever else can be built. And so a, a prophetic deficiency will manifest as a structural deficiency in whatever else we build or do thereafter. And so it's the mind of God now for the church to come back to the appreciation, to come back to the understanding, to come back to the function in the prophetic ministry without which we cannot be properly established and properly uh, focused in the work that we must do in this day and time. Can I hear an amen? When you go to Ephesians chapter 3, and I'll just pick one verse in chapter 3, which is verse 5. Ephesians 3 verse 5 says, uh, okay, we can pick it up from, uh, from verse 3. Maybe let me read from verse 1. Why not? Ephesians 3 from verse 1, the Bible says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have written, writ, have written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not, which was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the spirit of his holy apostles, to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, 
and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. There it goes one more time. That the prophetic ministry is part of the grace God gives to unravel, to reveal the mystery of Christ. Without the prophetic, there's an aspect of him we can never know. Because Christ is known by revelation. You know, Christ is the mystery of God. He is the mysterion. He is the secret of God. He is this well-guarded secret that God kept. And God did not keep the secret from us. He kept it for us. So God did not reveal Christ to us because he does not love us. He waited until the fullness of the time. And God in his own wisdom, he chose to reveal Christ by releasing the revelation of Christ to apostles and prophets. So without the prophetic, therefore, we are limited in terms of our understanding and our insight and our ability to see and to know Christ by revelation. Prophets are key in revealing Christ. Prophets are key. They are important in laying bare this mystery called Christ. And God has, in these last days, decided to open up what he kept quiet about. He has decided to reveal what was kept as a secret, unknown to him. And he has chosen to reveal to apostles and prophets. Now, there's one thing which is very unique about prophets and apostles and prophetic and an apostolic people. Very unique thing. Apostolic people, prophetic people, all apostles and prophets. One thing that is common is one string that runs across. It is the aspect of the grace and the ability to know God by revelation. Now, we do not receive revelation only through the ministry of apostles. We also need the ministry of prophets, and like I'll explain to you and show you the clear difference between the apostles and the prophets, and between the apostolic and the prophetic. And we cannot do without either of the two. It's not apostolic or prophetic. It is apostolic and prophetic. Because the two are like the two feet left and right. The two are like the length and the width of the building. The two are like the, 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 two, the, two, the, two, you know, the two of them introduce or point us to the cornerstone who is Christ. And for us to know Christ, we will need the right hand, the apostle. And we need the left hand, the prophet, who together meet right at the corner, and the corner is Christ. And so the prophetic ministry brings to us a prophetic dimension or revelation or grace or measure of Christ that we cannot do without. It is God who in his own wisdom gave the fivefold ministry of Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 11. And it begins with apostles, then prophets, and then evangelists and pastors and teachers. Apostles, prophets, then, apo then evangelists, pastors and teachers. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, there's also an order over there. It says, first apostles, then prophets. And so when you read the account in 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians chapter 4, you can see a very clear order. I don't think it's a ranking order in terms of importance, but it is a ranking order in terms of functionality. Wherever there be apostles, it will be prophets. Apostles neighboring prophets. The apostolic works hand in hand with the prophetic. Prophets work hand in hand with the apostolic. For an apostle to be effectively uh, uh, able to do what he or she or they are called to do, they need the prophets. But for prophets to be effective in what they are called to do and say, they also need apostles. Why? Because these two bring the two dimensions that illuminate our minds and our hearts towards this one place called Christ that we only know by revelation. No wonder the apostolic and the prophetic, apostles and prophets, these are gifts, they are graces, they are ministries of Revelation. I hope you get that because, you know, that's foundational and it is important even as we go into uh, this ministry. God in his wisdom decided that the foundation upon which we are built is the foundation of apostles and prophets. 
So let's now begin to talk a little bit more about prophetic ministry. Uh, in this study, I will look at several things. I don't know that I will have the time, Pastor Harry, but let me just mention them just in case I don't finish. You can hold my shirt later on and say there is this thing you had said you would teach and you never taught. Let me give you the scope of the things I hope to teach. Number one is to teach about the call of a prophet. From there, we'll go into defining prophecy and the prophetic ministry. And then we'll look at degrees of prophetic inspiration. That will be the third one. Degrees of prophetic inspiration. Then we'll go, number four, to the functions of the prophetic office. All right, you got it? Number five, levels of prophetic revelation. Levels of prophetic revelation. Then our sixth portion will be on prophetic pictures, visions, and dreams. You know, pictures, visions, and dreams really have a key role and place in prophetic ministry. Prophetic pictures, visions, and dreams. Number seven will be hearing the thoughts. Hearing the thoughts of God. Then our number eight will be prophetic listening. Prophetic listening. And number nine, God willing, will look at company of prophets. Company of prophets. Quite a lot to look at. Quite a lot to look at. Now let's begin at the call of a prophet. And before we look at my notes, let me say this. There can be no prophetic ministry or prophetic people or a prophetic company or prophetic gifts and graces operating in a place without the office of a prophet. What God establishes first is the office of a prophet before he releases the gifts of prophecy and raises a prophetic people. Just like you cannot have apostolic people or an apostolic company before you first of all have prophet, I mean, you have apostle, an apostle or apostles. So we want to look at the calling of, of a prophet because this is the foundation for the prophetic. With no prophet, you will not have the prophetic dimension among the people or prophetic grace, grace functioning among the people. Because it's based on the gift, the office of a prophet. Just like, just like, without evangelists, then we would not have evangelistic people. Because the impartation, the foundation of the grace for evangelism will require the gift of Christ given to evangelists who come and impart and train and send and commission the church to go into the prophetic or the evangelistic or any of the other aspects of ministry. So let's look at the calling of a prophet. Prophets, like any other five-fold minister, have a distinct calling from God. They have a distinct calling from God. So to be a prophet means to have received a distinct calling from God called the calling to the prophetic office or to the office of a prophet. And so prophets are distinct. Prophets are not evangelists, they are not pastors. Even though in the day we live in, every preacher is called a pastor. Even prophets, we love call them pastor. But be, be, that's, that's beside the point. The point is, the call of a prophet, because of the very mandate and grace and spirit that is upon them, they function in a very distinct way. Because they are crafted thus, they are wired thus, and as you're going to understand from our study here tonight and the days that are here, coming hereafter, you will discover that the prophetic ministry is a very unique ministry, and you cannot compare uh, it with any of the other fivefold, or you cannot substitute it using any of the other, because we need all the five functioning effectively, functioning fully for us to receive the full impartation of equipping that would mature us and bring us to the oneness of the faith to a mature man having the full stature of Christ. So they are distinct. They have a distinct calling, which means, therefore, that prophets should be prophets and not try to be any of the other of the fivefold ministers. A prophet is one who has revelation. 
it begins there. It's one who has revelation. And the revelation begins at the point of having, a re having the revelation of Christ, knowing the mystery of God called Christ by revelation. And oftentimes God will use visions or dreams or prophecy or scriptures or any other means to release rev revelation to a prophet. Oftentimes, because of the wiring of their ministry, prophets get caught up in a lot of prayer because of the nature of their calling and their giftings. Prophets and prophetic people spend a lot of time in prayer. And I understand that. I understand that because if they are to bring the revelation that is given by God, then they must spend enough time asking God for that revelation. And that asking is the communion and that's prayer. And one, you know, one very clear sign that God will give you about a prophet is general prophets spend a lot of time seeking God privately. It is simply because they must hear a word or see a word or get something or get an inclination of heart or an impression or so. And so prophets uh, spend a lot of time in prayer. They do so because they stand in the gap. They have to hear from God on behalf of those whose ears are deaf. They stand in the gap. They make up the hedge. They are making up the hedge because there are some whose wall or hedge is broken down. And by the nature of the calling of a prophet or prophetic people or prophetic churches, there are people who stand in the gap, people who make up a hedge. Prophets protect people. Pastor Harry read for, that, that, for us that scripture in the book of uh, Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. That the Lord brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt using a prophet. And then when they are in their journey out of Egypt, the Lord used a prophet to preserve them. See, prophets have a protective mantle. Pro prophets have a protective covering mantle. And that's part of the calling of a prophet. Prophets also execute the word of the Lord. They execute the word of the Lord. In other words, prophets are custodians of the thus says the Lord. Prophets are custodians of what God is saying in a given place at a given time to a given people. Prophets execute the word of the Lord. God loves to put his word in the mouth of his prophets. God loves to put uh, his word in the mouth of his prophets because that's how they are wired. They execute the word of the Lord. They, they, they will receive it, they will release it, and they will follow to see that that word from God is being fulfilled. A prophet is also one who teaches others to become either prophets or to become prophetic. All right? Prophets teach others to become prophets or to become uh, prophetic. Right, So you need to see that aspect and that bit of the equipping dimension of the prophetic ministry, which is that of teaching others, equipping others, imparting others, eh? educating others, giving understanding and insight to others. Eh? So that, we, like we read earlier on, we don't just have one prophet like Moses who is functioning in the prophetic, but that out of the one Moses, there can be a multiplication to 70 elders. And the 70 elders also go and impart others. And that chain continues until all of God's people are prophetic. Prophets anoint leaders. Or should I say prophets raise leaders. Leaders in every strata in the society need a prophetic touch. Businessmen need a prophetic touch. Leaders in the education sector need a prophetic touch. Leaders in government need a prophetic touch. It is the prophet who anoints. The prophet who anointed Saul is a prophet who anointed David. It is prophet who anointed leaders. Prophets provide counsel to warriors concerning divine strategy. Prophets are strategists. The prophetic ministry adds on to the strategy dimension in the church. Simply because, you know, prophets can see, prophets can hear, prophets can, 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 can catch some things. They, they bring spiritual intelligence by the nature of the gifting and calling. 
prophets are able to tap into high level spiritual intelligence and bring it to the warrior, bring it to the king, bring it to the man of God, bring it to the church, and so that we are strategic in what we do, simply because in the prophetic you find divine counsel. Prophets also prophesy. Now, most of us have limited the ministry of a prophet to just this last one, the one of prophesying. I'm here to tell you, prophets are not always prophesying. Sometimes they are counseling. Sometimes they are praying. Sometimes they are studying the scriptures. Sometimes they are writing notes. Sometimes they are interpreting dreams. Sometimes they are also spending time to bring impartations of grace to the body of Christ. But anyway, it is also true that prophets prophesy. And by prophesying, I mean they speak the word of God as they are hearing from God. They speak according to the revelation that they are receiving from God. And oftentimes, after a prophet has prophesied, or after we prophesy, or after having a prophetic encounter, Oftentimes, there is need for some equipping, some explanation, some teaching that would come concerning the very thing that we have been able to hear. So a prophet is key. Now, of course, of course, we know that while as there were prophets in the Old Testament, there are also prophets in the New Testament. I must draw a line here and say that while as in the Old Testament, you would very often have one prophet servicing the people for a season or a time. But we also do know that certain prophets have their contemporaries. You would have sometimes in Israel two or three prophets, maybe not more than that, maybe three or four, you know, at the same time prophesying together. But there's a major difference between the prophetic ministry in the Old Testament and that of the New Testament. In the New Testament, we have a multiplication of prophets. We have many prophets. Not just one Moses. We have many prophets. Just like we have many uh, of the other five uh, fold ministries. And so that means, therefore, that means, therefore, that as the church grows and increases and stretches to new realms and levels and regions, part of what God uh, does is to raise prophets for the church in Africa, for the church in Europe, for the church in uh, America, for the church in Asia. God will raise prophets for the church in Kenya, for the church in different parts of the world. So we are not looking at one Moses who must keep prophesying to the whole body of Christ all over the world. It's not possible. But from the one, and you know Moses was a picture of Christ. From the one Christ now, there are many prophets that God is raising, some of whom need to be affirmed, and I'm trusting some of them are watching uh, tonight so that they can be affirmed because prophets very often times suffer from a spirit of rejection, and many times they are running away instead of functioning because of the rejection they face and the misunderstanding they face here and there. Many times prophets are hiding, and I hope that God will bring out, will encourage the prophets and the prophetic people among us to come to the fore and begin to prophesy and minister as God has called them. Look at some qualifications of a prophet that become the foundation on which God builds this grace and function we are calling the prophetic grace within the church. The prophet is part of the fivefold ministers. Is a fivefold minister. And fivefold ministers from the reading of Ephesians chapter 4, they are, the, you are, they are the, the grace carriers or gifts of Christ given for the building. Each of the fivefold ministers is a builder. Apostles are builders. Prophets are builders. Evangelists are builders. Pastors are builders. Teachers are builders, although they build different aspects within the church. They are all builders. Their work is to build. Their work is to equip. Their work is to edify. Their work is to edify, is to build systems and structures within the church. But just as according to the gifting of the office, each seems to build in a certain way. 
And the prophet has a very unique way or very unique thing or assignment to build within the church. Except for all of them, the qualifications remain the same. The qualification is that they have to have received the grace from Christ. You cannot make yourself an apostle. We cannot ordain you to make you an apostle. You cannot envy the office or the ministry of a prophet and declare yourself a prophet. You cannot even attend a school so that you graduate ultimately uh, with the flying colors as a prophet. All the five, the scripture says he gave. Prophets have been given. They were given. These are men and women that have been given to become prophets. You cannot make yourself a prophet. You cannot appoint yourself a prophet. You know, the church is making a mistake currently where men are picking titles and offices uh, for themselves. And men are making themselves what they are not or at least what Christ has not made them to become. If you make yourself a prophet, then you have to maintain and sustain yourself as a prophet. But if he makes you a prophet, he will maintain and sustain you as a prophet. See, the trouble with self-made prophets is they have to get their own revelations. But those that Christ has made, to whom he has given to be prophets, because it is by grace, there is this inner river that constantly, continuously flows in them to produce the prophetic grace. It is easier to be a prophet made by Christ than a prophet made by men. See, prophets made by men oftentimes are prophets for men. But if he makes you a prophet, if he calls you and anoints you and graces you as a prophet, then you are a prophet, a minister of Christ, and as you hear and receive from him, you will minister and you'll be effective in building the body of Christ. Write this down. Only those made prophets by Christ have a role to play in the building or equipping of the body of Christ. Prophets made by men, prophets of men, do not build the body of Christ. They build something else. They can build their own organizations. They can build their own em empires. They can build their own ed edifices. But for one to build the body of Christ, you must from he the head Christ, from where the river flows, receive this water, this grace, this divine enablement that enables you, by the grace of Christ, to be one who can equip the body of Christ. So that's one qualification that cuts across. They, they don't all live on the same side of town. They don't all drive the same kind of car. They don't all speak the same language. But they all have received grace to be. You must remember that scripture in Mark chapter 1 when Jesus called the 12 and he told them, come after me, follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you my disciples. And it is those that were initially disciples, the 12 disciples, that became the 12 apostles. He said, come after me, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And in the fishing, the becoming fishers of men, that's the expression of their discipleship and their apostolic grace and ministry. But mark the words of Christ. He said, come, follow me, I will make you. We don't make ourselves prophets. We don't make ourselves apostles. He makes us. And how do we know he has made us? It is because he will release a measure of his grace. And that grace becomes a measure of Christ or a measure of the ministry of Christ, which God in his own wisdom decided to divide into five dimensions. And he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers for the work of edifying the one body that belongs to the one Christ but requires to be serviced by five technicians, five specialists, five dimensions of, uh, of contractors, apostles, and prophets, 
evangelists and pastors and teachers. And the church can never be complete if all we have are teachers. The church can never be complete if all we have are teachers and pastors. The church can never be complete if all we have are pastors and teachers and evangelists. The church cannot be complete if all we have are pastors and teachers and, uh, and anything else. If we don't have the five, we need the five. And we are living in the season and the time of an activation of especially the office, the ministry of prophets and apostles. The church in Africa, generally speaking, has appreciated the ministry and the place of the teacher and of the pastor and of the evangelist. We have, we have no trouble, we have no quarrel. And see what teachers and pastors and evangelists have done. They have produced churches all over Africa, mega churches all over Africa, a people that are can gather a people uh, that, uh, that can care for one another, a people that uh, understand the basics of the word of God. But Christ did not give the three only. He gave the five. And for a long time, we have not appreciated this office of a prophet and an apostle. And for the last 20 years, there about, God has been restoring the apostolic and the prophetic because we need them. We need them, and especially because of the grace and the assignment given to them. Apostles and prophets, like we read earlier on in Ephesians 2, verse 18 to 20, they lay the foundation. How? Why? Because they are revelatory gifts. They are gifts that bring revelation. What kind of revelation? They reveal to us Christ, who is to us the cornerstone, the foundation, upon whom we are built to completeness and fullness to a place where we have the mind of Christ in totality and completeness. So the qualification of a prophet is not Bible school. It's not nice suits. Some of the prophets will put you off even by how they dress. How do you like to attend John the Baptist crusade? The man does not dress well. The man does not eat well. He will put you off. His mannerisms are not the best. But that man carries a word that will shift nations and generations. Because the qualification for all the five fold is one, grace. Some of them, like Peter, were unschooled. So Peter was not an apostle because of having read enough books and gone to enough universities. No, he was an apostle because Christ had given to him. Prophets are prophets because Christ has given to them the grace of that we call the prophetic grace. Other qualifications have to do with character and uh, other strengths or skills. But the primary qualification of a prophet is that he or she has received from Christ this grace that makes him and that establishes him in the office of a prophet. Now, when they minister prophets, they do several things. When they minister, they do several things. And I want us to look at a little bit of the prophetic operation, how their, their office, how their ministry uh, really operates. The first thing is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 to 29. You have to learn to listen to James Bogua. I like to give the scriptural reference because if I read every verse, we'll be here until midnight. And I want you to go and sleep so that you can wake up tomorrow and do some work before we meet again in the evening. So 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28 to 29, from that text you will see this. And if the media team is kind enough, they can put some of these scriptures uh, uh, to scroll some of these scriptures. From 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 29, you see that prophets are set in the church. They are set. They are established. They are to operate from the church. Not some cave someplace. Huh? Not some spiritual clinic somewhere. Prophets are set. God has set in the church. And that's how a prophet gets protection and covering. And that's how a prophet gets checks and balances. And that's how a prophet also has his physical and spiritual needs also met in the covering of the body. Because the body heals 
the body strengthens itself. And prophets are not operating from away or outside the body. A true five-foot prophet given to be a prophet by Christ Jesus is set in the church where they are accountable, where they grow, where they minister. Because a prophet predominantly ministers to and from within the church. Even when prophets will minister to nations or to different uh, publics, they are doing so from the church. Moses was ministering as one of the Israelites, but to his fellow brethren. Huh? He was not ministering to them as if it is you there, you Jews there, you hard-headed people, you there, you, and me, holy man here. No, no, no. He was set among them. In fact, the Bible says, I will raise a prophet from among you. Moses was raised from among them. A five-foot prophet ministers from within the church where they find covering and protection. This ministry is one of grace. It's by grace. No one went to school to become a prophet. Well, we conduct schools of prophetic ministry to sharpen people, to equip people. I understand that. But the school itself does not make you a prophet. Only makes you a sharp prophet. Huh? A cultured prophet. Uh, a knowledgeable prophet. But it's not the school that makes you a prophet. It is the grace because it's a gift. To be a prophet is to be a man who has received a gift from God. It's by that gift. And that gift is called that gift is called grace. He is the one who gave to some. He gave grace to each. Ephesians 4 verse 7. He has given grace to each. And the gifts were given as proof of his ascension. And the five-fold ministries are ascension gifts of Christ. They are ascension gifts of Christ. They are gifts to prove his ascension. That's one. But they are gifts to release the ascension dimension. The, the authority, the dominion, the, the, the governance anointing of Christ by building a people, a dominion minded people. Now, of course, prophets have the spirit of prophecy. And we'll explain some of these as we get along. They have the spirit of prophecy upon them. They also have the gift of prophecy. Right? So it's not just office of a prophet established by grace, but, but they receive the spirit of prophecy that activates them and energizes them or helps them or empowers them when they need to prophesy. They also have the gift, the gift of prophecy, which is given to all believers, as we'll see from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 as we continue. Now, prophets play a very key role in perfecting, edifying, and building the body of Christ. They play a key role in perfecting and edifying and building the body of Christ. We need prophets. Kenya needs prophets. We need prophets now. We need them today to enable us to interpret current happenings, you know, local news, to help us understand what COVID-19 or any other pandemic or calamity is all about. See, without a prophet, we are blind and deaf. But with prophets, whose other name is seer, they are seeing in advance, and they are seeing so clearly to the detail of what is going on in a given time and season. Prophets are useful in edifying and sending forth other ministries. They are very key in identifying and sending, identifying and sending forth other ministries. In Acts 13 from verse 1 to 4, there were prophets and teachers in the church in Antioch, and as they were ministering to the Lord, the prophetic grace was stirred, and the Spirit said, set apart from me Barnabas and Saul, because though they were numbered among the prophets and teachers, they were apostles. And so prophets are very key in identifying and sending the other five-fold ministries. That's why prophets work in presbyteries or teams. That's why prophets sometimes speak things we don't understand. 
Because oftentimes they are foretelling, they are speaking about things that are yet to come. Or they are decoding or explaining some enigma or something happening currently that we are blind to and we cannot clearly see what is going on. As I finish because of time, uh, let me now mention that prophets, when they minister together in teams, they bring four ministry dimensions in the church. Write these four words. Four ministry dimensions in the church. Number one is exhortation. Exhortation, which means they stir up. Exhortation, stirring up. Number two, edification, which means build up. Number three, comfort, which means bind up the broken. And conviction, which means open up. They bring exhortation, they bring edification, they bring comfort, they bring conviction. Well, that's all we had time for tonight. And I want to pray before I bring Pastor Harry to come and conclude for us. Father, I thank you for this first session. I, I sense I have spoken so fast. Maybe some of what I was saying was not very clear. But I thank you for the mantle and grace upon this conference. And I thank you for my wonderful dear viewers tonight. And I pray, oh God, that as we think about these things and as we meet again tomorrow, grace will be released and unlocked to open our eyes and our hearts to understand and appreciate the place of the prophetic in building the church, in releasing the revelation of Christ so that we are all built and edified to completeness and wholeness till we have the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in us bodily. I thank you and I bless my listeners. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, we'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you. Pastor Harry will come and conclude for us. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, if you are here, I would have told you to clap your hands and appreciate the ministry of the word. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor James, for laboring so very much, beginning to allow the grace of the Lord to lay a foundation for that which you would like us to know. Because in knowledge, that which we have is activated. So many things that have come through this wonderful first evening that indeed for us to be prophetic, we need to begin to know Christ. Christ is a revelation of the prophetic. Or even as we come into the grace of the prophetic, Christ will be revealed to us. And as he is revealed to us, he begins to form us. He begins to mature us and bring us to the place where we can operate as mature sons in his kingdom. It is only time that is an impediment for us in these sessions. And of course, I know many times when we are watching, we, we have what you call media fatigue. But I do believe that these short minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes of impartation of his word are minutes that are bringing life to you. We hope to see you tomorrow as you tune in. I want to ask you to do us a favor. Kindly call a friend. And, uh, and let them know that we are coming with this word or share this link with this, a friend of yours and tell them there is something that is happening on this platform and, uh, and let the word go out that, that indeed there is a particular word that is coming to us that is going to be of benefit to us. I have in mind that the Lord wants us to flow this way because of the season that we are in this particular time. May the Lord richly bless you. Before we, we pen off, I want to invite you to open up your wallet, to open up your phone and share with us and share with this ministry of the physical material things that the Lord has blessed you with. The Bible says share with those that share with you spiritual things of your mat material things. We are using the Mpesa uh, number, pay bill number 701-334 to become a blessing to the ministry of the word, to the minister of the word, and to this ministry, and to the Lord, ultimately. And so that that which is being released through this platform will be impacted into your life. And we know that your life will never be the same again. Well, that's all the time that we had this wonderful first evening 
in this session. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. At 8 p.m., again, call a friend. Let your friends know. Gather together in your living room. And, of course, I want to ask you to subscribe to our channel so that when we come on, then you are notified. Thank you, and may the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Shalom, grace, and peace to you all. Amen.